I've looked at some good push connectors and uh, I thought it'd be time to take a look at some not so good ones. I mean, they're not terrible, but they're not great. And the fact that I got 100 three-way connectors shipped for £5, that's everything inclusive, suggests that they're going to be very cheap indeed, and they are. The word copper does not come into play here. So let me show you the principle behind these. If I zoom up a bit and I've got a cable pre-stripped, it's a thin cable because these are designed mainly for lighting applications. Unfortunately, some of the feedback suggested that people are using them in their home wiring like glowing feedback. Bargain, amazing, great, just in time for my kitchen refit. I get the feeling that people are using these for much more serious things and they're not suited to that. But the idea is that when you push this in, you may be able to see the little uh, port opening and you can just basically stuff the wire in and it locks. It's worth mentioning that there is exposed metal at the side here. It's not as good as the ones that shroud it properly. And there is no copper, as I say. It is literally just a stainless steel tang that's pushing up against that. And I can show you that because I've taken one apart and I took a picture. So I shall zoom out a bit for the picture and show you what's inside. Focus down on that. So inside is this little... I'm guessing that it's spring steel. I'm guessing it's kind of stainless steel. It does very, very lightly stick to a powerful magnet. So I'm getting the feeling it is stainless steel as opposed to um, other metals. But uh, this is slid in from the side. It's pushed in from the end here. And there's a little end stop here during manufacture that stops at the correct distance. And then this blade on top is pushed down. It's got a square shaft and it goes in and it goes through a little hole in there and it locks it in place. And when you push these down, it basically, it's got two little fins here that uh, push that uh, spring plate down and allow you to slide the wire in between the uh, fins. And then when you release them, that stainless steel tang comes up, that spring steel tang comes up and grips the wire. But the, it doesn't go in terribly deep. I can probably show you that by uh, grabbing a bit of wire and just showing you with, say, for instance, this is this going to work put in like that it's not really showing it but it's only gripped it by a couple of millimeters it's less than an eighth of an inch but that's going to be okay i suppose if i mean it's gripping it that's the main thing um let's try one of the other connectors because unfortunately the listings for these they they rate them at 10 amps so hopefully people will get an idea that they're not really rated for ring final circuits but they also say things like suitable for a uh, 2.5 millimeter cable. Is it going to work? It has. It's actually pushed in. I don't think it'll come out again. Oh, it did come out. What if I just push it in on its own without pushing that down? Oh, it does. It, it pushes in and it seems to lock fairly well. That's promising in a way, but not suitable for high current. So I'd rate these only for lighting type stuff where you've only got maybe one amp or so. They'd, it's the sort of thing you'd find inside cheap fluorescent lights. And I have to say that uh, some lights I got for studio lighting from CPC did originally come with these as part of the package. And it just had a little tiny stub of flex mount light and one of these for joining onto your chosen cable. But they have since changed to a Wago style connector, not actually Wago, but Wago style. Now, I have a question, because I wonder about the fact that, technically speaking, when you're putting copper in here, you've got two dissimilar metals. And it's not really an issue unless there's water involved. But I don't know how it's going to change over time. You might actually use some of these, bury it away in a junction box somewhere, and then over time, there's going to be potentially a resistance is going to occur. I'm not sure what interaction there is going to be between copper wire and this stainless steel. Now, I do notice that in these type fittings that you've got, this is a 15mm uh, pipe fitting uh, uh, for joining pipes at a right angle. And the design is such that you've got the stainless steel tangs in here. I shall zoom down this. Stainless steel tangs, and then you've got the little rubber o-ring behind it, which means that the pipe goes in, it pushes past those, seals with the rubber uh, o-ring, but then because these are on the outside, they're not going to be wet. You couldn't really put them on the inside because uh, if they were submerged in wash, you would get that electrolytic action. Uh, and likewise, on this type of uh, fitting, 
We've got the little embla- embedded sort of steel teeth in here that bite onto plastic pipe or copper pipe, but then we've got the O-ring at the back there. So in both these instances, unless it's leaking, uh, it is going to shield it from water ingress because that's when you're really going to get issues with electrolytic corrosion. So I'm not really sure. The metal experts will be more knowledgeable about this than me. But it is an interesting connector. I took a look at these like eight years ago. That just, that just broke. This is one of the eight-year-old ones. It just broke. That's a clue. Um, but I like the fact that the construction is optimised. Literally, you've got this little cap here. You've got the housing and it literally has that little end stop that you just push this in from this end. I would guess the machine pushes that tang down the process, pushes it into the end stop and then when this gets pressed in, probably in bulk by a machine, it just locks everything in place. This one has a crack because I've been grinding away at it and attempting to open one. But that's basically how they manufacture them, so it will be spilling off the end of a machine in China. Uh, but there we have it. Uh, these connectors, they might be okay inside an enclosure at very low current, but I really wouldn't recommend them for anything like, say, a power circuit. And uh, they really are just really aimed at uh, fluorescent or LED fixtures the inside of them, where there's no risk of them being touched, even a junction box. But that's interesting. It was uh, worth taking a look at them. It is interesting to see the options that are available and ponder where people might actually be using these, not realising that there's no copper at all. It is just steel on uh, the copper wire that's pushed in, and therefore it is going to have a slightly high resistance of the steel itself, and also the point of contact, since it's not copper to copper, you might have issues there. So interesting to see what you guys think of that, whether you think there's potentially going to be corrosion issues or interaction between the uh, copper and the stainless steel or the spring steel tang.